Recently, I have been asked to explain change detection in Angular. And it's an important topic because for most of the time it just works, but still there's a lot to understand because change detection also has evolved quite a lot since the first version of Angular. Initially, we had just a default change detection mechanism, then suddenly we got on push, and now with signals, we even get something that is called local change detection. So let's explore all those things and dive in. To create those diagrams, we are going to use eraser.io, which has dropped a new feature that is diagram GPT. And I'm really curious what it can do. So one of the important things when it comes about change detection is the component tree. The component tree is an internal visualization of our Angular application, basically how our components are connected, that Angular uses to perform change detection. So let's go ahead and generate a diagram for such a component tree. Okay, we asked diagram GPT, please generate me a tree structure that shows an Angular component tree. The tree has at its root an app component, which has two children, a product component and a user component. And the user component has a user detail as a child and the product component has a product detail as a child. So let's go ahead, click on generate diagram and I'm curious what we will see here. So it's generating a flowchart diagram, which is nice. Oh, wow. It even includes the Angular logo, which is pretty nice. And we see app component, products component, user component, product detail and user detail. So that's exactly what we wanted. So let's go ahead, save and edit the diagram. And now we can start looking at change detection. Okay, let's maybe rearrange the stuff here a bit. Let's take it a bit over so that we get a bit more space, a bit down. Nice. And here. Okay, this is our Angular component tree. And let's say now something happens in the product detail. So basically somebody comes to the product detail and clicks on product detail. Now, what is going to happen in this scenario regarding change detection? So the first ingredient or the first thing that is happening is there is a library called zone.js, right? And zone.js is a separate library. So if you check your package JSON, you will see that zone.js is listed as a dependency. And zone.js basically monkey patches JavaScript events. By default, zone.js monkey patches around 250 events. So that means now, whenever a click happens, basically zone.js picks up that click. So let's draw an arrow from here to zone.js. And maybe we make that dot even dotted because zone.js picks up that click. Now what is going to happen is Sonchez uses this information and goes over to our app component tree. And what it does, it calls appref.tick. Appref is a reference to the application and dot tick is the function that invokes change detection. Now the important thing to notice here is that Sonchez doesn't deliver any information about where a change happens. So it doesn't tell Angular, hey, something changed in the product detail component. It just tells Angular, something changed Angular. Please go ahead and figure out what changed. And what Angular then does, let's use a different color. Let's maybe use orange. What Angular then does is Angular goes ahead and traverses this component tree. So Angular basically comes and first starts to check the product component. Checking means it dirty checks basically the previous value of the model against the current value. If something changed, Angular knows he has to update the view. Then Angular continues traversing the tree and goes further down to the product detail component. Next, of course, Angular also has to check the user's component and of course, also the user detail component. So that's the traversal that Angular does. As you can see, those are many unnecessary check because for each component, we dirty check the component, the previous value against the current value to figure out if something changed. And those are many checks that Angular has to perform. So of course, this is not the most performant thing. And this is what we refer to as change detection strategy default. But can we do better? So let's copy that diagram and let's take a look again at our scenario. On the Angular team, we have some of the most brilliant engineers. So of course they are aware that this is suboptimal and therefore they introduced something to improve the situation. So what they came up with was something that is called change detection strategy on push. So again, we have the same component tree. 
But in this scenario, all of our components use the change detection strategy on push instead of the default scenario. So let's mark that here as on push. So once a click occurs, what is going to happen is that our product detail component is marked for check and this bubbles up. Our products component is marked for check and also, of course, our app component then. So we basically bubble up the tree and mark everything as checked. So when you have on push, the component is marked for check if you either call mark for check manually on the change detector app if an event occurs here or if an input changed by reference. Now again, the click occurred and our good old friend Sonchez again kicks in and monkey patches that event. So we again have here Sonchez and let's draw and let's also draw those arrows where we have sewn here. Um, we want it as a dotted arrow. And then again, another arrow, which goes to our app component. And inside here, we call appref.tick. So again, Sonchez tells Angular, hey Angular, something changed, go figure out what changed. But again, it doesn't deliver any information about where a change happened. So what is going to happen next is Angular starts again the traversal, but he knows that he only has to check the one that are marked for check. So that means that Angular can basically completely skip that whole left side of the tree. So that means that Angular only has to check this one and of course our product detail. So we dramatically reduce the amount of needed traversals and amount of needed checks. And that's the change detection strategy on push. But still, this is not yet fully ideal because we still have to traverse that whole thing. So can we do even better? Again, let's copy our diagram and restart again. So let's again say we have our component tree and an event occurs here. So what would be the ideal solution? The ideal solution would if we don't need to check our products component, but if we would only need to check our products detail component. So the one component here. We also refer to this approach as local change detection. Now local change detection is one of the reasons why we get angular signals. So now starting with Angular 17, you already can benefit from local change detection in certain scenarios. So let's take a look. In Angular 17 today, you can still use your components as on push. But in addition to the on push strategy, you can also use signals. So inside the product detail, you could access inside your template a signal. So usually you do that, do that by using the string interpolation and then you would basically call your signal. Notice that calling functions in a template was considered a bad practice for quite, quite a while, but with Angular signals, this is the preferred way. So now you would access this signal inside your template. Now in today's scenario, we still have our good old friend Sonchez here. So that means whenever a click happens here, our component is still marked for check. So the tree up is still marked for check because the event occurred inside our product detail component, then the event is still picked up by Sonchez, right? Sonchez then again does appref.tick and then again, Angular has to traverse the whole component tree and we basically end up with the exact same scenario as previously. So, so how is this local change detection? So here it is not, but the situation changes dramatically if our event, for example, happens on the app component and somehow over a service, our signal gets updated. Because in that scenario, what is going to happen, the whole tree is not marked for check, right? So the only thing that is marked for check is here. Sonchez would pick up the click not from the product detail, but of course, just from here where the click event occurs and then calls app ref tick. Now, the thing is that if the signal here changed, this is marked for check. And this one will be marked for check. But this one 
will be marked for traversal. That means that we just traverse it, but there will be no check performed here. So what that would lead to is kind of like we still traverse, but here it's no check. So let's use a different color. So let's use maybe the blue one. So this is still a traversal, but it's no check, right? And then we have the only thing that we actually have to check is our product detail component. And inside the product detail, we use the orange one again because we have to check. So, and that would be local change detection in Angular 17, right? And in the future, so let's again clone that graphic. So in the future, what will happen is Angular is basically working towards a future where we get rid of zone chairs. So this would no longer be happening, right? And if this doesn't happen, there is not no need to have this top bottom approach and we can basically also get rid of the traversal and this would not be called on push components but probably signal components so we will have something that is called signal components and whenever we have signal components angular just behind the scenes knows where the signal changes and then can update the view this has some impact and the impact is that inside your template, you can only use signals. So having just a normal flag would not run change detection. This would only work if we have signals and then we would really get local change detection. So means we would only run the change detection here on this red, where the red thing is. And that then doesn't matter if the event occurs here or here or where it's coming from. And that would be local change detection without zone.js. So I hope you enjoyed this video, which explains change detection a bit more. Please leave a like and a subscribe and hope to see you next time. Keep on building great things with Angular. I'm out.